All right, so we're going to be taking a closer look at a 1947 Dictaphone machine, a Dictafelt, a Dictabelt. First off, let's look at this little repair tag right here, see some of the dates on it. I'm just going to rest the camera right on there, right on the magnifying glass. Okay, so it says, if you can't see it very well, 11, 7 to 67, two of them. Um, 315 to 63, and then um, 710 of 67, and 46 of 66. Um, and does that say rectifier on it? Hold on. Does it help if I turn off the light? Does that say rectifier on it? It has a selenium rectifier on it, and I'll show you guys. See right there. So I wonder if that was replaced. Um, this belt is still here, which is amazing. Does that have a year on it? No, not one that would make sense anyways. There's a big motor right there. Um, here we have the read and write head, which is actually back there. Maybe I can get the magnifying glass down in there. Um, it's on this block right here. Get it. Oh dang, this thing smells bad. It smells like cigar smoke. Oh well, you guys can't see the stylus. Um But so yeah. This is the read and write head. This has a pen that like broke off um and then right down here there would be a card and when um you would put a little time stamp the like pen thing would go like that go like that and it'd make a little dash right at that time mark because it would say like 5 10 15 20 25 30 because these the reels that would be on here not reels it was like a it was like a flexible record that you could ship off in the mail or send down to somebody in the office so this is quite revolutionary but it could fit like i think 30 minutes or 45 minutes something like that um don't quote me on any of those and then you have this big resistor right here it's like that big resistor Little thing that runs out, runs along it. I turn this knob. Let's look at that mechanism. It's pretty neat. Um, this I think is maybe where the tubes are hiding. As you can see, all original capacitors, so if this thing were to work, it would be have a big hum, unfortunately, until I replace the old ones. Looks like electrolytics down there. So, this thing would need a lot of work if it actually worked. Wow, look at that cord. This one is like cloth that's all deteriorate, deteriorating. It's braided. But a rat's nest actually was in here when I first got it. So I had to clean it out. Look at 
that motor. This motor might actually work. I should probably... I should put some voltage onto this motor and see what happens. This belt is still flexible. Which is amazing after all this time. You can make it spin really fast. Or you can make parts in here spin really fast. If you push... If you, like, push them. Or something. I forgot which part it was. Yeah. Yeah, look at that one right there. That thing. That, that goes fast. No, I think that's supposed to be pressing up against this. Might have had some rubber on it that's completely gone. Um, so anyways, I guess this video is kind of like a little bit of a closer look inside of this. I actually made this video a long time ago, but then I deleted it. Um, I wanted space on my camera, and I hadn't uploaded it yet. So I was just, uh, I was just like, uh, I'm going to delete it. I forgot what I did in the other one, but somehow it got up to like 17 minutes long or something. Um, I might have like tried to plug it in or something, I forgot. But I, di I have tried to plug it in before and it doesn't work. Or at least as my knowledge goes, it doesn't work. I even like had something rest on the pedal, just in case that was like a play button or something. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing anything in here right. Got a capacitor down there. Oh no, that's like a field coil type thing. Um, anyways, this has been a bit of a closer look in a 1947 Dictaphone Dictabelt machine.